Hello, guys, and welcome back to the show. Happy Wednesday. I'm about to hop on live. I'm so excited for today's topic. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Morning Tea Live. Cheers. I am so excited for today's topic. I swear to God, I was going to get here on time today and then this weird fuzzy spider in my room. Oh, it was terrifying. And I really didn't want to have to kill it. I tried to take it outside. I failed. And as Gabor Mate says, guilt is better than resentment. So I got to just live with this guilt now. <laughs> but I am proud of myself for killing it because before I would not have even been able to do that, even though I feel guilty because I don't want to kill. Oh, the spider healing journey is, is continuing for me. For those that don't know or are new here, I have a big fear of spiders, particularly tarantulas. So we are healing it. We are feeling it. We are doing all the things. So since I just had that terrifying experience, we're going to need to ground as always. So everyone sit up nice and tall, taking a big, deep breath into your body and release. Two more. One more. For as long as you have your breath, you can literally breathe through anything. That is what I keep learning in life. You can breathe through anything. So never, ever take for granted your breath. All right, let's get going on this juicy topic. So first of all, what is our topic? Our topic is external saving. What does that even mean? External saving is when your inner child wants to reach for something outside of yourself to make them feel saved and safe. So what inspired this topic? First of all, I was surprised I haven't talked about this. I mean, I'm sure I've talked about it on past episodes, but I was scrolling through all my episodes and I was like, I can't believe I haven't talked about this like as a topic on the pod yet because, um, or for morning she live, because it's such a huge one, but what really inspired it was this past weekend, I went to this incredible, oh, incredible money masterclass. And it really just reminded me of the importance of the energy in which you relate anything to. So for example, I noticed at this conference, there was a lot of frenetic energy. There were people like, yeah, sign me up, get me rich, do this thing. Cause you know, at every seminar they promote something. And so that was me at the first event last week, I went to this incredible event with all these speakers. And one of the speakers was this guy who led the money masterclass. And he promoted this masterclass a couple of weeks later. And that was me. It was like this dopamine hit. I was like, yes, teach me all these things. Da, da, da. It was really focused on a lot of the like divine masculine stuff that I have been very resistant to learning, like stocks and investing and tax-free accounts and like basically how the wealthy stay wealthy and like all these things. So anyway, I was like, okay, this feels really resonant. I'm going to do it. But you could just feel it's like everyone's rushing to sign up. Like there's this frenetic energy and it's like, you have to make sure that it feel like for me, it felt very clear that attending that, attending that masterclass was like a fuck yes in my body. But you can also, this can be so sneaky because it, it can also be one of those things where you just see everyone else doing it and you're like, oh, I got to go and like do this thing. So then I attend the masterclass. It was super helpful, super informative. I'm still kind of digesting all the information, just learning about like when you actually make money, how do you grow it? Where do you put it? How do you move it? How do you um, do business deals with people? How do you invest it? How do you do all the things? So at this masterclass, they were advertising and promoting this next level of like this mastermind and this trip and this conference and just more things that they're hosting. And so I, I, I really wanted to do it, but I was like, this, this is like an, it's, it was like an insane investment that I don't have right now. And I was like, just no, this is not the time. 
But the old me would have totally been like, okay, tell me the payment plans. Let's go into debt. Let's just put it on the credit card. Blah, blah, blah. Because the dopamine would have been so like, yeah, do this, do that. Like, and so what I reflected on in my own healing and my own journey was that events like these in the past would have just spiked that dopamine for me. And I would have just said yes to everything. And then I would have come home and been such in this frenetic energy that I would have like eventually crashed and come down and been like, what the fuck did I just sign up for? (laughs) And I, it, it really made me reflect on how much of us seek that external saving unconsciously. So we go to a conference or we go to a thing and we're like, oh, this is going to be the answer. This is going to be the answer to all my problems. This is going to be the solution. And we end up saying yes or investing or signing up for all these things. And then we don't actually, Luna, we don't actually take time to sit and ground and ride those emotional waves to determine, is this actually an aligned decision? Is this actually authentic? And especially if you know your human design and you know, do you have an open emotional center? This is something that I learned in my human design. I have an open emotional center, which means that one, I'm, I mean, no shocker here. I'm a very emotional person. And, and in my brain, I'm like, well, everyone's emotional. We all have human emotions, but the way in which we feel and relate to those emotions is a little bit different for everyone. And so in my human design, I'm a very emotional person. I have to ride those emotional waves rather than making an impulsive choice. And so I recognized the frenetic energy. I recognized this like, okay, everyone's going and rushing to sign up for this thing and dropping their credit card. And I recognized how the old me would have sought that for external saving of like, if I just learn this one thing or this one account or this one way of investing, boom, I'll be rich. I'll be, you know, set up for life. I'll build generational wealth, all these things. And the thing is, is that, yes, it's totally valid and okay to want to become a wealthy person and create generational wealth. And that is a thousand percent my plan, but it's how you relate to all of the things. Like I talked about in last week's episode, everything is a relationship. Every, every way that we relate to something, it will determine how that thing plays out to it, plays out for us. So for example, if we are relating to it from this graspy external saving energy, the universe is going to put us in our place real quick and be like, bitch, this is not going to save you. You are going to save you. The amount of times I would go on this platform and be like, oh my God, I have to join this business coaches, mastermind, I have to go here. I have to go there. I have to go there. It like pulls you in a million directions because everyone's on here selling their stuff, right? As we should, because that's what we're here for. But you have to have enough self-connection, self-awareness to be able to discern when something is aligned versus when something is from this energy of external saving. So when I hired my mentor and I started doing this healing work, it was a full, calm, fuck yes in my body. Like there was no ounce of doubt. I gave her my credit card. I said, take my money that I don't have. I am ready to heal. And that's what I did. And it was the best money I've ever invested. And that was two years ago. So at this point, it's been well, well past that initial investment. However, with some of these other offers that I see on this platform every day, I literally had to get to a point where I had to mute all of the business coaches that I followed. I had to mute all of their stories because this constant advertising of like, this one will help you. This one will save you. This one. And it's like, little me would be like, oh, oh, oh. And it's like, no, no, we're coming back. We're coming back. And my mentor and I used to like fight on this all the time. She'd be like, you don't need that. I'm like, well, you just blah, 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 blah. And she's like, but you don't need that. Like, just focus, like sit your ass down and focus and build your business. And turns out she was right as she is on many things. (laughs) And I started really being able to help my clients with this too, because I would notice that like, we would be working on something and they wouldn't be integrating it. And then they would box for me being like, oh, I think I'm going to join this thing. And I think it's going to help with this. And it's like, wait a minute, like 
you've literally already hired someone, you're investing your time, energy, and money, and yet you're not even integrating what we're doing before wanting to go hire a million other people and join a million other offers, like make it make sense. So that is something that I think we all experience to some extent, whether it's in my position, being an entrepreneur and just wanting someone to fucking show me the way and be like, help me, this shit's hard. Or if you're in a relationship, And you are constantly going to your romantic partner and asking them to help or help save you from something, right? It's like, oh, can you just do this for me? Oh, can you, I I don't want to do it. It's like this fear that comes up. For example, the spider, I literally called my dad because he's on his way to to drop off some dog food and to go to the casino because that's what he does. He does, he comes to California and goes to the casino. and he's going to be doing that while I'm working. And I have this thought of like, okay, I'm just going to wait for him to get here and he can take care of the spider. And that would have been external saving. Now, listen, sometimes in all honesty, I choose the external saving. I'm like, it's fine. He'll just kill the spider, whatever. I just need help. And I did that in my old apartment with the, my neighbor who would kill my cockroach before me. So you know, we have to choose our battles, but when it comes to even just those small moments, like I, I just like sat with myself and I was like, do I really want to like, what if my dad wasn't here right now? Do I really want to fucking have to call my dad to go kill the spider for me? Like fucking put on your big girl pants and go kill the damn spider. First, I tried to bring it out and it didn't, didn't work. So anyway, I did it right. And now I feel like, okay, I did it. I took care of it. It wasn't perfect, but we got it done. Now that's just a small example, but those small daily examples add up of where are you looking outside of yourself for someone to help you or save you from the emotion that gets prompted when you think about doing that thing. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a huge difference between actually seeking support because we all need support versus, and, and that feeling aligned versus constantly looking outside of yourself for avoidance of the fear, avoidance of the pain, avoidance of whatever it is that you are wanting someone to save you from. Do you guys hear this? This is what I'm living with for the next week. It's been two weeks, one more week of babysitting these dogs. And this little one just makes the wildest noises. Anywho, so especially when it comes to the big scary things of creating your life, right? Like for me, it was building my business. This next thing that I really know that I cannot, nothing can save me from this of doing the work of it is writing my book. I literally am the only one that can make my ass sit down and write this book. But are there moments where I'm like, oh, Jesus, if someone could just burn this out of me. And, you know, allow me to just be done with it, then I wouldn't have to think about it anymore, right? There's always that part of us that's like, someone just do this for me or someone just help me or, or maybe you're on the opposite end of me where you're like, don't feel safe to ask for help at all. And that's also a trauma response. So they're both trauma responses. If you guys have been with me long enough, you know that 99.9% of our behavior is trauma responses until we do the work to rewire our nervous systems. So if you're on one end where you don't feel safe to seek support, there's stigma around it. You feel shame. Your ego is like, you should be able to do this yourself. That is fear. That is you making it mean something about you. Or if you're on the other end, like me, where I love to delegate, I love to seek support. A lot of my work is bringing it back to myself, holding myself accountable, showing myself that I believe in myself, that I'm capable of creating my life and building my business and doing all the things that I want to do. So I want you to take a moment right now as you're listening to this, and I want you to take a breath into your body. And I want you to just notice... What is one area or one thing in your life that you are seeking external saving from? And really be honest with yourself. Really be honest about what are you seeking external saving on? Like, what do you want someone to come in and just save you from? Writing a book, building a business, uh, exiting a 
not healthy relationship, uh, maybe messaging that cutie that you want to date. Like, what is the thing? Losing weight, getting fit. That was another one I used to seek so much external saving on. Oh, this, this health coach will be the one to save me. Oh, this person will be the one to see. It's like, nope, I'm literally the only one that can have power over what I put in my body and how much I move my body. And that's what it comes down to. And of course, all the emotional piece that I have also worked on. Same thing with, for example, when I hired my social media manager, I had to get really still with myself. Is there any part of me that is hoping that this will save me? Like, oh, she'll take over my social media and she'll make me go viral and then I'll get all the sales and my business will blow up and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, I, again, I'm the only one that can do that. I'm the only one that can do that. She can help me, you know, make my page look prettier. She can help me um, do strategy and all of that. Like all those things are helpful. Yes. But I'm the only one that can choose to press record and record a video myself and then post it as a reel. I'm the only one that can go out there and film content for you guys. I'm the only, like, you are the only one. And when you realize that it's both liberating and terrifying. Because on one hand, you're like, oh shit, it's literally all up to me. And that feels scary because the pressure's on. It's like, it's all up to me. But on the other hand, it's all up to you. And that means you can create anything you want in your life. I was just boxing with one of my high level clients and she, I helped her reframe something. She was saying, she was saying something like, you know, I fear that my trauma will not allow me to relate in the way that I want to relate. And I said, remember your trauma is not this like external thing, like a wizard behind the curtain being like, oh yeah, Rachel will get to relate differently, but not you. It's like, you literally get to make the choice. I am going to choose to heal this. Every major thing that I've healed emotionally, anxious attachment, BPD symptoms, I literally have told my mentor, I'm going to heal this. I don't know how, I don't know what that's going to look like, but I am not accepting this as my norm. I'm not accepting this because I am worthy of better. I deserve better. I want to feel better. So I'm not going to accept less than how I want to feel in life. And then we talked about how I can apply that to every other part of my, part of my life that I'm creating my dream body, my dream business, my living situation is just choosing. I am choosing to build a business beyond my wildest dreams. I'm choosing to build and heal my physical body and build a body beyond my wildest dreams. I'm choosing to dream bigger and bigger and bigger and making the choice that I'm going to create everything I say that I'm going to. I am choosing to write this book. I'm choosing that it will be a bestseller. I am choosing that I will get it done more quickly than I could imagine and not procrastinating on it any longer. Because what I've been doing with my book is I dedicated a day of the week, like Fridays are supposed to be my writing days. What happens on Fridays? I haven't been writing. And so I have to look at, well, do I just expect this to get written itself? No, I have to be the one to write it. When I used to get really stuck around fantasy, especially when it came to money, I would tell my coach, oh yeah, I know I'm going to be a millionaire one day. And she's like, well, what are you doing to make that happen? And it's like this one day thinking like, oh, I know one day I'll live oceanfront. Oh, I know one day. And it's like, well, what am I doing to make that happen? So It's interesting because on one hand, I've had to work a lot on faith and releasing control and leaning back when my anxious attachment would make me want to lean in and try and force things. But on the other hand, the fear would stop me from actually taking aligned action. So I was operating on these extremes, this all or nothing, this black and white, where I would either go all in and like do all this action from a place of fear and frenetic energy, or I would not take action at all and be like, yeah, I know one day, you know, this will happen. And it's like, okay, but what, what am I doing? (laughs) What am I doing to actually move the needle forward? So it's, for me, it's been learning to be in this gray area where I am taking intentional 
present action, but not forcing things. So taking that present intentional action in combination with deep faith, trust, desire, manifestation, and doing the energetic work, and those two combined, that is how we create our lives. We can't just sit back and visualize all day, not take any action, but we can't take all the action all day and like hustle survival mode and not have any trust that we are supported in doing it and think that it's all up to us. It's not. The universe literally is with us every step of the way. So does anyone have any questions so far about external saving or where this might show up in your life? I have a sip of my tea, but there's a lot of Luna's cat here. So we're just gonna put that away. And thank you to those who have joined. I'm just seeing right here. Hello, hello, hello. I'm waving to all of you. Okay. Any questions? No questions? Okay. So let's see. Trying to think if there's anything else I want to share about external saving. When you have the urge to reach for external saving, I want you to remember that it is little you. It is not adult you because adult you is able to move through things in a way that doesn't feel as heavy. If things feel really heavy, like I'm procrastinating on this book, why? Because it feels heavy. Why does it feel heavy? I have to get to the root of that. The root could be something like, it feels like so much I want to say, I don't even know how to say it. And so it's this like fear of not knowing how to do something, this fear of not trusting myself, this fear of, you know, well, what if I actually do this and like make my dream come true? That doesn't feel familiar. I mean, it does with some other things. Oh, my grandpa called. Okay, we're back. Sorry, my grandpa was calling. Um, what was I saying? So, oh, the root of the fear of writing this book. It's like, I mean, there's so many roots to it. One, I think it's not trusting myself. It's that it feels heavier because it feels like I don't, I'm going to get stuck. Like I, I won't know what to write next, or I, I won't know how to organize it, or I won't know how to do good job. It like all comes back to trusting myself, which is always my lesson. And then it also could be vulnerable to like put all that out there. Or maybe there's going to be emotion that comes up as I'm writing it. It's like, there's so many things that can make it feel heavy of like, just looking at it and being like, Oh my God, writing a whole book feels like a lot. But then when I really break it down, I'm like, okay, what if I just write one page? What if I just write a chapter? What if I just, you know, put like make a plan and actually just like take some action daily? It doesn't have to feel so heavy. Okay, so I'm just reading the comments. I think the seeking saving gets more and more sneaky. What do you do as it gets sneakier and sneakier? <laughs> yeah, the shit is real sneaky, like super sneaky. I mean, the first step is always awareness. Sometimes when things get really sneaky, we don't catch it. And so the first step is practicing catching it of like getting still with yourself of, is this actually an alignment or is this seeking saving? And it may be a little bit of both, you know, like, was it in alignment for me to go to this master class this past weekend? Yes. I learned a lot. Was there a small part of me that was also like, oh my God, I'm going to learn the secret of how to get rich. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm being fully honest. So it was a little bit of both. So the first step is like, you have to notice when that sneaky part comes up and you can feel the difference, right? Like when it's coming from your intuition from this grounded place, it's just gonna feel like this internal calm. That doesn't mean that you may not be excited about something, right? Like when I signed up for the master class, it was a fuck body yes. And there was a calm to it, but there was also excitement around it. But if it's coming from this place of fear, then you know that there might be some external saving involved. So if you have an example, like 
of a sneaky thing. And I can kind of give you more guidance as to how to break it down or how to be more aware of, um, is this an alignment or is this external saving? And sometimes we honestly don't know until we do it. And then we have to look back and be like, oh damn, I was totally seeking saving. And it is sneaky because some of the things that I've wanted to join in the past, and there were parts of it that did feel aligned, like, oh, I really like this coach or, oh, I really like the idea of this group or, oh, I really think I could learn a lot. And it's like, yes, of course, I would always learn a lot, but do I need it? No. Sometimes we just desire things and that's okay too. And then when you actually do need things, you also have to acknowledge like, yes, I do need this or I do desire this. Like right now with, you know, my own personal healing, do I need it? I believe I do because it's helped me get to where I am and it's just going to keep helping me get to where I want to go. Do I desire it? Yes, because I believe that especially as entrepreneurs, we need support. We are not meant to do this alone. Okay, it's a guy I like and seeking validation from him. So let's see, seeking validation and then how that ties into seeking saving. So is it is it that you feel like you're seeking validation as a form of seeking saving? Because I mean, they are connected, right? Like if we feel like we need that validation, our inner child needs that validation. And then we're not getting it. And then we're like, we, we are relying on that validation to save us from, you know, the trigger or the fear or the emotion that's coming up or not feeling safe, then yeah. Yes. And attention. Yeah, absolutely. So this is where it's nuanced, right? Because on one hand, we all need validation as humans. What is validation? Feeling heard, feeling seen, feeling understood. That's all that validation means. Feeling heard, feeling seen, feeling understood. Feeling like our feelings make sense, right? Like, oh, I hear that you're feeling sad. That makes sense that you would be feeling sad. Or I hear that you're feeling right. So now we all need validation. But again, it's the energy in which we're relating to it. So for me, I had the biggest validation wound you would have ever seen in your life. And my body would go into full episodes of, of grasping for that validation until I got it because it felt like I was not safe until I got it. It felt like I was not, if I'm not understood, then my needs are not going to be met. And then that survival mode place would come up of if my needs are not met, I'm going to die. Like that's literally how it felt is like an IV drip of validation of like, once this IV stops, I'm going to die. That's literally how it felt. And so I literally had to train my body to not need that anymore. And once I stopped grasping for it, I actually started receiving it a lot more naturally, which feels way better. So it's sneaky because on one hand, like you said, the external, the seeking of the external validation can be from that inner child place of, I want attention. I want saving. I want, you know, let's say I'm not feeling understood and I want to be saved from this fear that's coming up. And so I need this. It's a combination of one meeting yourself where you're at. Like there would be times where I literally just had to tell my mentor, I, I'm needing validation right now. I'm feeling really scared and that's okay. Like it's okay to meet yourself where you're at. As long as you're being honest about it, as long as you are, that is what clean energy is. Clean energy is you're being honest about what you need. Because what I would do is I would feel so much shame around needing the validation that I would then try and get the validation in very sneaky sideways ways. Like I would ask kind of weird questions like, oh, what do you think about this? And then my mentor would be like, what, what's happening? And I'd be like, oh, nah, nah, nah. you know, like I would just try and bullshit myself. <laughs> Oh, so glad those days are over. <laughs> Just oh, so much to be grateful for. So sometimes you need to just ask for it and own it and be honest with it. That's where it gets sneaky is when we're not being honest with what we're actually needing. It's okay to need validation. It's not okay to then make the person wrong if you don't give it to them. 
or they don't give it to you. I used to do that. Oh, my poor ex, my poor exes, all of them. I mean, I was both a treat to be with and also it was difficult. My poor ex, I would literally on a like daily basis, just make him feel like shit. You're like, you're terrible at validating me. You're terrible at, at communicating in a validating way. And yeah, he was, he was very invalidating. <laughs> like He was very, very invalidating. And it wasn't his responsibility to validate me. It was my responsibility to look at, oh, this communication with this person does not feel very safe. And so rather than making him wrong or forcing him to learn a different way, I used to whip out my DBT books, teach him, you know, here's the seven steps of validation. <laughs> I even tried doing that with my mentor once. I was like, did you know that we actually need valid? Like I would like, I would let my background as a therapist just flare my ego and just like fucking give lessons on validation because that was me seeking saving through that external validation. So it's the energy behind it, right? Like if you like this guy and you're seeking validation from him, one, it's looking at, okay, what's the root of this? Like, what is little you needing or why is she needing this validation? What is the fear there? especially with romantic relationships, it's like, okay, the fear is, you know, they're not going to like me back or they're, you know, not going to understand me or whatever it is, but you have to develop a sense of feeling safe to be misunderstood. And then you also get to say, does this work for me? Right? Like I don't ever want to date someone who's super invalidating because again, it's not that that would be then coming from that same place it used to come from for me, which was my inner child seeking saving, it's more of just like, it's really important for in a relationship to hear each other, to listen to each other, to hold space for each other, all of that. But how would I relate it to that differently? Instead of fucking forcing validation lessons down this poor dude's throat, I would have just said in a very calm, grounded way, hey, this is how it makes me feel. You know, when you communicate this way, would you be open to communicating a different way or like talking about this and seeing if they're able to meet me but it wouldn't be like you're wrong for this because that's me projecting my own needs and my own fear onto that other person so you can communicate as a couple and say like hey this is what you know works for me in terms of communication this is what doesn't are you able to meet me there absolutely that's just expressing your needs that's expressing your desires but it's not okay to project that need onto the person. And if they're not validating you being like, well, you're not validating me and you're wrong. It's like, no, it's, it's not their responsibility to validate you. It's your responsibility to get your needs met both through yourself and through, you know, the partner or whoever else you're in relationship with. So it is sneaky. It is subtle. It's not going to look perfectly, but all you can do is really get curious around what am I seeking validation on? Why am I seeking it? What is little me needing? Why am I not feeling safe? And am I able to relate to this in a way of it's not their job to save me, but rather practicing expressing what you're needing and seeing if the energy change in that allows there to be a new outcome, a new experience. Because let me tell you something from personal experience, when you force the validation, when you force the need getting met, it does not get met. It actually re-traumatizes you because then you just feel further invalidated or further shame or whatever the fuck it is. But if you actually allow yourself to change how you are expressing that need, not making it their responsibility, but again, coming back to it's your responsibility and this is mine to express because no one knows how to meet our needs. We don't even know how to meet our own fucking needs. How are we going to how are we going to expect other people to know? I would always do that. I would expect my mentor, my partners, my family, my friends, I would expect everyone to know how to meet my needs. And I would get so fucking resentful, like, oh, they don't know how to meet my needs. I didn't even know how to meet my needs. How the hell are they going to know how to meet my needs? It's not anyone's job to meet our needs except for us. And we, if we don't even know how to express it, if we don't even know what our needs are, I didn't even know I needed validation until until my validation wound slapped me in the face. And I was like, oh, like this is something I actually need to ask for because I need it. Like 
I don't need it in the same way I used to. But when I was in a full blown BPD episode of like grasping for that validation and feeling like I was dying, I needed that because I didn't get that enough as a kid. And so that was part of reparenting little me was just acknowledging I do need that. And the more that I could just own that, like, yes, I need validation. The more that my mentor is able to give it to me, the more that I learned how to give it to me and the less that I need it. And now I don't, it's like, yes, to some extent, every human needs it. But when I feel misunderstood now, and I feel that chest tightening of like, oh my God, I got to explain myself. I got to defend myself. They misunderstood me. I'm like, oh wait, it's like, I have to shush my inner child. Oh wait, we are safe to be misunderstood. Do I understand my intention? Do I understand what I meant to say? Do I understand myself? Yes. That's all that fucking matters. Not everyone's going to understand us. Not everyone's going to hear us. Not everyone's going to make us feel heard. In fact, most people are going to make us feel invalidated. And we have to learn how to connect home to ourselves and give little us that attention, that attunement, that safety that she needs or he needs or they need to feel safe to be misunderstood. Because it can feel so terrifying to feel misunderstood. And if you haven't listened to my pod episode on that, that's a whole other topic. So how is this landing for y'all? Any other questions, any other thoughts, any other comments? How are we doing on time? We're, let's see, I started, yeah, probably should start wrapping up. So just know that this stuff is sneaky and it's not about getting it perfect. It's about leaning in with curiosity. It's about being able to get still with yourself and get honest with yourself. Getting honest with ourselves, oh, it's life-changing. It's not easy, but it's life-changing. And when we're able to be honest with ourselves of, yes, I'm, I'm seeking external saving, we get to just make a choice like do we actually want to relate this way and sometimes we will sometimes we'll choose that and then we just have to learn and be like how does this feel to choose this option not in a judging way just in a curiosity way and other times we're going to choose not to reach for the external saving and we're going to come home to ourselves and it's going to be hard it's going to feel scary but it's going to be so fucking rewarding because the more you do it the more you know how to do it and the less that your safety depends on something outside of yourself, whether it's a person, a behavior, an addiction, and that sets you free. All right, these dogs are wild, wild, wild. So any other questions before we wrap up? I'd love for you guys to, to just notice where, what area in your life this shows up in. For me, it's business and romantic. It's like, if I'm dating someone and... I'm feeling just like scared, overwhelmed, like, you know, oh, it's been a hard day and I just want to hug, right? I just want to be held. I just want to be soothed. I could so easily whip out this phone and text like a million exes or people. I mean, like, you want to come over? And then I have to get wrong, honest with myself. Do you actually want this dude to come over? Or is this your inner child? Sky is having full on zooms right now. <laughs> He's selling well on ceilings. <laughs> like, do I actually want this dude to come over to help soothe my inner child? No, no, I don't. Because how am I going to feel afterwards? Oh, shit. I gave in to my inner child. She just needed to fucking go to bed. She was exhausted and grumpy, but instead she's fucking calling these fuck boys. No, I don't actually want that. So you have to have that self-discipline, that self-discernment to be like, what is the need here? And do I actually want this person to come save me? No, they can't. They can't. Definitely romantic relationships and money, buying things or buying food to self-soothe. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. That's a big one. I think I talked about this on the last episode, but like <laughs> I would do this thing where it's like, I would have fear around money. So then I would just go spend more money of like, oh my God, see, I can spend money and it's fine. Like just taking myself in a deeper home. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Just like get still and breathe, you know? So it takes, it takes a lot of practice, but yeah, for me, it's usually business or money. It's like, 
you know, oh my God, this feels scary. It just, I want to fucking hide, you know, it's just building a business literally brings out all of your trauma responses, all of them, like not one left behind all of them. And then same with the romantic relationship, because it can create that level of intimacy that you had as parent child dynamic with two partners where you see all of each other's shit. And you're like, Oh, I just like coddle me through it. Like I would just turn into full baby mode. And I'm like, that's not attractive. Like, like I always say, no one wants to date an activated two-year-old. It's just not attractive. It's not attractive energy. Now, is this to shame yourself when you act like a two-year-old? No, it's to have such deep compassion and gentleness that little you is running the show and she's needing something and she feels fear. I look back at all the ways that little me was showing up in my relationships and how that was actually reinforced a lot of the times by my partners because they like it fed their inner child of like, oh, I can take care of something or someone and avoid my own self, right? This stuff is so sneaky. It's so hardwired. So it's not to shame yourself for it. It's to just, it's almost like to be able to laugh at yourself, right? Like, oh yeah, I was fucking acting like a two-year-old with this dude. Like it's not, not cute. I'm not going to shame myself for it, but I am going to look at, okay, what was happening there? What was happening that I was relating to this person from external saving? What am I actually needing? And the sooner we can get to the root of what we actually need, the sooner we can meet those needs and the sooner that we can release the external saving. So it's that, it's that beautiful cycle, like recognizing the need, meeting the need, and then it shifts how we relate to that person. Now, when I feel that graspy energy of like, oh, wouldn't it be nice to just like have someone to snuggle with? And I'm like, oh, wait, I just need to go to bed. Little me is tired and she's graspy. I can just give myself a hug. I can soothe myself. But then also soothing yourself, there's sneaky things that we do that can be very addictive, right? Like food, sex, money, all the things. So when we're looking for that self-soothing, what is the actual need underneath that? So for me, if I'm looking for self-soothing, especially at nighttime, it's that I need to go to bed. I'm tired. And instead I'm like fucking a wound up two-year-old. If it's business and I'm seeking that external saving and I'm going to all these places and getting all these dopamine hits, I need to fucking get off the internet, mute all those people, come home to myself and refocus on my why, my vision. Why am I putting out these launches? Why am I recording this podcast right now? Connecting back to my why and stop outsourcing my power. So, all right, I could talk about this forever, just like I could with any other topic, because I love talking about this stuff so much. It is so, so life-changing and important. Um, but thank you guys so much for those that have tuned in live and for those that are going to listen to this on the pod. Enjoy, have it playing, you know, when you need a little dose of reminder that no one can save you except you. That does not mean we don't need support. We absolutely need support. We need someone to teach us how to guide ourselves back home to us. So support is aligned. Support is different than saving. Aligned support is grounded. It's a yes. It's this feels nourishing. This feels like it will be an expander for me. External saving is frenetic energy. It's like, oh, I'm fucking feeling so afraid. I just need to reach for anything. The alcohol, the weed, the porn, the video games, the, and it's like, okay, can we just be with the fear? Can we tend to your inner child who's fucking just so terrified and just needs some tending to? So remember intuition is calm, aligned support, aligned investing, aligned decisions is calm or like a fuck yes, calm and excited all at once. And an external saving is a little you running around with frenetic energy because they are scared and they need holding and safety. Bring them back to the safety in the present moment. Because 99.9% .9 of the time, the present moment is actually really safe. It's just our triggers and our trauma and our nervous system being stuck in a survival mode that makes us feel like the present moment is not safe when it actually is. So keep coming back to the safe, the safety of the present moment, right? Like 
ground with your five senses. What can you see? What can you hear? What can you smell? What can you touch? What can you taste? Bring yourself back to the present moment. Three deep breaths. You are safe in this present moment. The only person that can save you is you. And it's okay to need support. Not the same thing as saving. All right, my loves, that is all I have for you today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Um, ways to jump into this work if this feels like aligned support, not external saving, because I cannot save you. I literally, I will tell you that right now. Anyone who claims to, to sell some shit that's like, oh yeah, I can save you from this feeling. No, fuck off. That's a red flag. I cannot save you. What I can do is help you feel safe to save yourself. I can help you feel safe to come home to yourself and take the action that is the action that's going to help build your life. So three ways to jump in right now. My two signature group programs, Come Home to Yourself whoop, for Anxiously Attached Women, Real Men Heal for any man who wants to rewire their nervous system and build secure attachment. And then my membership, Beyond Your Wildest Dreams, we are having the October masterclass. It comes with one monthly masterclass, a monthly Q&A Facebook group, and then you can upgrade to tier two or three where you get access to my entire body of work. The masterclass for October is Inner Child Reparented. Woo, woo, woo. So fitting for everything we just talked about. That's going to be on October 30th, which is a Monday. And then maybe we'll do the Q&A on Halloween. That could be fun. So head to the link in bio to apply. We only have a couple spots left and come home to yourself. I keep it really small intentionally. And then Real Men Heal, we have, I think we have three spots left, I want to say. About two or three spots left. So Now's the time to apply and then we can hop on a free discovery call to make sure it feels in alignment, to make sure it's not external saving. I literally have had discovery calls where I've told the person like, it doesn't seem like you're ready for this and this is external saving and you're not like, it's not that this work is external saving, it's, it's the way in which you're relating to it. So if you're not ready for this, because this is not easy work. So if you're not ready for it and you're just like in this place where it's it's actually going to do more harm than good, then I will tell you that. Like I want aligned clients. I want clients where it's like a fuck yes in their body, but also just this calm knowing of this is what I need to move forward. That is what that is what I want to attract. So those are the three ways. Head to the link in bio. I love you all so much. Take time to come home to yourselves. You are safe. You are perfect as you are. And I think those are all the announcements. Yeah. Love you all. See you on the next episode or the next live, wherever you are watching this. And if you guys have any topic requests, DM me. I love topic requests. Okay. Bye.